All right, so welcome to the inner circle of the visual effects community, uh, exploring concepts and items around the visual effects uh, space. So let's get into this one. This one's very exciting. It's about generating light wash as if from a lightsaber, from a light sword. Let's dig into it. What I'm going to be looking at here are generating kind of the wash of what you see uh, from the lightsaber, kind of simulating as if it were emanating some light. Uh, that's always good because it's not enough to just animate the lightsaber in. You have to kind of make it realistic to the tune of what that is having, the impacts that is having on the environment around you. So a couple ways to get that done. I'm going to take out some of these layers because it's just going to get confusing. I have a couple different uh, versions of the same file here, and I'll explain why they are all important. All right. I've mentioned before in Caden Live that it works in a stack format. It'll work top to bottom for both the video and audio layers, if that's relevant, and also for the effects top to bottom. So the things that are on top always take priority, like the topmost layer, and then the thing on the bottom would be underneath everything, so to speak. So understanding that with this topmost thing, the V3 or whatever is highest, numerically highest, that one I want to start by adding in a mask. And just so you can kind of see what this mask is doing, I'll take out the other layers. This is what's left at the moment. And I am using a particular effect here called the rotoscoping mask. This is a little bit different than the uh, the rotoscoping uh, other effect. If I were to go look that up here, where they are technically both masks, but this one, the rotoscoping mask, this was intended to be a collective, uh, I'll say unifier, so that anything above it leading up to it in the stack, this is actually limiting all those effects within that mask. That's how this was intended. It, it can also sort of work that way with the other one. I haven't found too many distinctors, but this is how this one was designed and built, this, this rotoscoping mask. So that has to be underneath everything that I want it to be able to control. If I didn't want the mask to affect it, I would need to put it below the mask, if that makes sense. All right, so up top, you'll notice how this is disabled. That's because I initially had tested using a motion tracker uh, to copy just the positional information of myself. That does not work yet. Uh, I have submitted a bug report to the development group. I don't think it's been addressed yet, but uh, you can capture motion easily enough. It just does not translate over when I try to bring the keyframes over into something, say, the rotoscoping mask, which has its own shape. And I understand geometry, but I'm just trying to import the positional information, and that does not seem to work yet. So waiting to see what happens there. But understanding that, what I'm about to show you, it works well enough just doing the keyframes manually as well. All right. So first step before you get to any of these other things, because this is going to control the other ones, is you need, first need to set what these things are going to do, all right? <laughs> the area that it's going to affect, because that's the value of it. You only want to affect a small portion of the screen, of the, of the media element. I'm affecting myself in this particular one because I want there to be wash on myself. It doesn't have to be a perfect cutout. In fact, because I'm putting the feathering up, I want it to be diffused or have the behavior of diffusion. That's what the feathering does. The passes is a compounded processing of those of that feathering. Um, so you can stack this up, but it does add more computational, more CPU draw when you do that. I find about four is, is sufficient. Um, but yeah, the feathering width increases the amount of blur or the gradation between uh, the edge and then the outer edge of it, if you will, kind of grows it with blurring, graduates to uh, the transparency. So I wanted to make it so that it had that diffused look and the mask itself will do that. These are just a couple of keyframes that I just tracked my basic movements. You can see somewhat how I'm rotating. It'll get clearer as I unlock everything else. Uh, perhaps I should do that just so you can see a little better. There, as I move, you can see that I had to move the points that I created with the rotoscoping mask. And anytime you start using a mask, by the way, it will allow you to create this rough shape. Uh, if you haven't done that before, it's not that hard. You would look it up and drag it on. 
to your clip and it would give you the opportunity to begin clicking. Uh, what I can do is I can actually turn this off for a second and drag that on just so you can have the benefit of seeing what that's going to do. All right, so you can see how it says or mentioned, click to add points, right click and press enter to close the shape. So you would just, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, you can always adjust it as you go or, or later as you go. You would just kind of rough out approximately what it is you want to map out. Making sure that you have enough points to make it flexible because you cannot add points that I, at least not that I found, um, after the fact, you need to have enough points going into it, and the right click is the final element. And from there, I have the control to either move a point, or if I want to use the Bezier curves, I can bend it around other objects from there, which is really, really helpful, because sometimes you just need to get um, into a curved or <laughs> fairly odd-shaped surface. Uh, so you can do that on two axes from every point. All right, so that's the idea behind the rotoscoping mask. And you can create as many keyframes just like anything else. You can map the movement of those points to keyframes. So then going back to the one that I had already worked with. I have moved them in and I have already done a lot of the legwork of comparing about how far the splashing should be. That's why they're moved in around me and not all the way out to the edge because of that feathering, the diffusion. Uh, so that's the first step is kind of mapping out the movements of the thing that you want to wash onto and making sure that that makes sense for wherever those points need to be. Now, at one point I moved it off because I didn't want the mask there. That's just one simple way of dealing with <laughs> uh, the mask for only a partial piece of the clip. I actually put it way over there because I didn't want it affecting this part of the clip. All right, that is your, your first step, setting up those controls. Next, you would bring into it the changes that you're going to implement. Now, I brought in a colorization, uh, which is also keyframable, a colorize. That's really useful because you have a lot of control over the color, over the amount of saturation, and then the lightness. And that's actually what these keyframes are mostly for in my case, is that I needed to change the lightness a little bit as the lightsaber in this case got closer to me or moved further away so that you'd kind of get the impression of light getting bolder as I got closer physically to it or giving it the opportunity to move that brightness in perspective to where I was. Uh, again, you're, you're looking to mimic reality every way you can, so that gave me a good degree of control within that mask. I also needed to use a transparency effect because full strength starts to look a little unrealistic and too bold, so this tones it down a little bit, but that also means that you need to bleed and depend on kind of a pure layer underneath, if you will. That's why I have another copy of the same clip below it, so that as I start to lean on what I'm only filtering on this one, it's going to exclude everything that it's not being affected by that mask down. It'll actually make it transparent. <laughs> so we need an underlayer, co an exact copy of that to make sure that I've still got all the other pieces of what I'm looking for. Now in this one, there's a couple of things too. In this one, what I've done is I've done another rotoscoping mask, but for this one, the difference is that I have selected portions of the room. That is what is being affected here because as, as much as light bounces off me, it's also going to disperse around the room. So there's a higher degree of feathering, of blending. Um, I got those five passes in there. Again, four or five is generally pretty sufficient. You may need to change the alpha operation as well to minimum a lot of the effects that begin to invoke transparency. They start you on right on clear, but as you start to change settings, sometimes it'll lose the transparency layer and putting it on minimum brings that back. I don't know why that is, but that always works consistently, just so you know. <laughs> So we have that and kind of the same idea as I move the blade around, it needs to follow and actually be impacted by when it goes in front of me. And there should be areas like here where it does not carry through. It does not uh, shed that light. And that was another way that I could just simply move my points around myself, uh, frame, not so much frame by frame, you can kind of rough drag through and you can see the major movements. And the beauty of keyframing is that it will animate the differences and you should spot check it, but you'll get very close just by doing 
quick skips through and then coming back and filling in any gaps that are glaring. Um, usually it just goes pretty fast doing them uh, in passes that way rather than try to do them all up front. But you can see there's not that many. I did add outside the mask, I measured the stack is important, so I didn't want those to be affected or limited by the, the mask. I wanted these just to impact everywhere in this media element regardless. I added brightness and contrast, and really what this is doing is, as those other effects are coming into play, there is a scene where the blade goes behind me. And usually a camera will react to that in that it will try to compensate for the amount of light behind something. <laughs> um, or if it's locked, it will try to draw on that light. So I did try to mimic that a little bit by playing on the brightness and the energy of the blade. And I just thought that would be kind of a cool thing to play with where it plays with the camera, quote unquote, even though there wasn't actually any light involved with this lightsaber, it was a static prop. That's why we see those there and why those keyframes um, are in this way. Now, what you can also do is if you have a good idea like this, where there's two different effects, they actually don't pair them together right now. Uh, but if you know you're going to need keyframes at the same places, maybe just adjusting the settings for each one a little bit, what you can do is after you've done the brightness, you can use the three dots. And this works for just about any effect, by the way, in Kidding Live, is you can use the three lines, copy all frames to clipboard, and then on the new effect you bring in, same three lines, import keyframes from, from clipboard. And it will give you a couple different offer, offerings as to what that should do. Position really is um, what you use for the most part. Geometry might work, I haven't played with that too much, but positional data works pretty consistently for bringing over those kinds of settings and things. And that allows you to create the keyframes in exactly the same frames, and then you just need to go by and tweak those that you know this, those settings that are unique to that effect. But it saves you the legwork of having to refigure out and create where all those keyframes should be, if that makes sense. All right, so those are the two layers. I had to implement a third layer though, because again, I am masking off only certain sections of my clip, which again invokes transparency to areas I haven't chosen to include. So dump da da, I need to include another layer underneath everything so that there is something for all that transparency to come to. It's not just black space anymore. Let me activate that one now. And in here, it also needs to mimic the exact same settings for brightness and contrast because it's supposed to be a mirror image of the other clip otherwise. It should follow those same controls. And those are actually the only two effects built in here. That's just to maintain the consistency of what is actually happening outside of the mask. And really, that is the bulk of what's going on um, for that particular effect. You'll notice these other things, and I'll explain those uh, at some other time. Uh, what I was looking to do was to achieve actually adding some light reflection in my eyes, which this idea mostly works. It's so small and far away that I can get away with a little bit, but we'll get into that another time. The purpose of this was just to inform you of how to do light washing, which that is how you can do that and confine it using the rotoscope mask and control it to a high degree of what it should be impacting. Um, you could actually apply the same idea if you were looking to just uniquely colorize, not even with light wash, but just uniquely colorize something by really precisely matching and rotoscoping off the area that you wanted to control. It would take a lot more work to maintain that shape, especially something that has a high degree of motion, but it's not impossible. That of course would be far simpler if the motion tracker would allow you to bring over positional information. Hopefully the team will get on that or at least find a workaround for us so we can speed that up some, but at least for now, it's still possible with a little more grunt work. All right. Thank you so much for joining in on this session. I hope you learned something awesome. Don't hesitate to ask questions. I do give priority to members in this space. And also I invite you to submit ideas. If you really are burning to know something, if it's possible uh, within dominantly with the Kaden Live, but I will research and find a way as a valued member, I will work on solutions to help you achieve your visual effects goals. So let's work together. And thank you so much for being a part of this experience. I'll see you next video. Take care. Love y'all.